today we are talking about lessons from the movie eight mile who is your inner circle and how well do they support you how can we own being embarrassed and turn it into something positive how can we look past the outside to get to the inside let's continue our month focusing on some some summertime does your clutter own you unclear your clutter inside and out we'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire come on let's get started I watched the movie Eight Mile with my husband. He had chosen it. I have to admit, I don't prefer rap. I like old school rap. No fucking on the dance floor, which I know is really gonna date me. And I'm not a fan. However, I really try to have an open mind and be inspired. And I believe if I'm open, I can learn a lesson from practically anything. I don't know much about the world of rap. This movie, is based, I believe it's a semi-autobiographical movie on Eminem, the rapper. You know, not a huge fan, but he is one of the lessons that I learned about today. And so when I watched this movie, it inspired me to do a podcast episode. Here are my three takeaways from 8 Mile. The first one, Rabbit surrounded himself with people who supported him. His inner circle believed in him. And Rabbit is the Eminem character, and Eminem did play Rabbit. Here's what I want you to think about. What's your inner circle like? Are they going to support you when you choke in a rap contest in front of everyone and still believe in you? Or are they off hanging out with the winner? If you are trying to release your physical clutter, do people support your decisions and offer to help? or sabotage you by bringing things over even when you've asked them not to, or by insisting you hold all the family stuff that no one else wants and won't allow you to throw it away or sell it. When you say you want to meditate, do people say, great, or say, do it later, let's go have fun now. When you want to end a friendship because someone is unkind, do your friends support you, or do they try and talk you out of it? If you're trying to bring awareness into the spiritual clutter in your life, do your friends say, Pshaw, it's a waste of time. You're fine the way you are. You don't need to improve yourself. Are there people in your life with negative energy that overwhelm you when you see them? Do your friends honor your request to not invite them when you're getting together, or does that person seem to be at every single occasion? Take the time to examine your inner circle. You know, my father, Big J, often says to me, if I were accused of murder or some other horrible crime, and if I could count five friends who would stand by me, then I'd be one of the luckiest men in the world. Think about that for a moment. If something horrible was to happen to you, maybe you went, would have to go through bankruptcy, have a costly illness, get a divorce, something huge. Do you have five people that would stand by you? Those are the kind of friends that you want. What impressed me in 8 Mile is his friends believed in him more when he couldn't see it and believe in himself. And because of that, that supported him. What's your inner circle like? Take time to think about that and then decide if you have to take any action. The second lesson I learned, own being embarrassed. It's near the end of the movie, we're in the final wrap off, and what that is, and maybe I'm a geek and old and don't know these things, so in case you're like me, they have two guys get up and they're gonna like do what I'd call a dueling wrap off. So right prior to this, the kind of the not so smart character is laying out in front of Rabbit all these things like your girlfriend cheated on you, the worst things that happened to him, the guys are like, what are you doing, man? He's about to get on stage. You got to get pumped up. And then Rabbit had his aha moment. He completely owns his embarrassment. So when he gets up there to rap, he talks about how he was cheated on, how he's failed at things. I mean, he owned everything. He had guys come and beat him up. And so when the other opponent gets up there to rap, 
he can't say anything because his whole plan had been to embarrass Rabbit. And Rabbit owned it and took it on, so the guy just walked off and Rabbit won. By owning his embarrassment, he had defeated the other person. What exactly is embarrassment? We are most likely to be embarrassed when we believe we have not lived up to expectations, whether it's our own expectations, friends, family, or societies. We also become embarrassed with undesired attention. The context also matters. If I fall down in my house in front of my husband, which has happened upon occasion, he's not going to be surprised, and therefore I'm not embarrassed. Tripping on my way to the podium for a speech, I'm going to turn beet red. Embarrassment cannot be faked and shares our true emotional state. It's signaling guilt or shame. How do you overcome embarrassment? Rabbit owned his embarrassment. What else can we do besides owning it? How do you rise above that overwhelming feeling that all eyes are on you? And I have to share, I am someone who, I turn beet red, literally, and I can feel it coming up in my cheeks and burning, and I'm completely embarrassed, and then I feel it becomes compounded because I am beet red. Here are some things that you can do. Talk about things that embarrass you. We feel embarrassed because we start assuming what others are thinking, and you all know what it means to assume. When you share embarrassing stories with friends or other people you trust, trust being the key here, you take away the power those moments have over you. You will most likely see that your friends aren't going to judge you negatively. And if they are, refer back to the first lesson I learned. Your friends might end up opening up and sharing their stories and you realize you aren't alone. Come on, you know you're not alone. We've all been embarrassed. Remember that turning red and feeling awkward shows that you care. We tend to see people who are embarrassed as people who understand when they have crossed a line or made an error. We all know someone who seems to not admit that they have made an error or acknowledge that they crossed a line. Embarrassment seems a lot better now, doesn't it? Ask a question. We fear being seen in a bad light by others and can feel even worse and blush more. Consider asking yourself, I blush when I'm anxious. What does that mean? This allows you to refocus back on the interaction and conversation taking place instead of your own embarrassment. This can help slow down your embarrassment response faster than continuing to focus on your beet red face. It places the focus on the external rather than the internal. Remember, most people are focusing on themselves, not you. Don't take anything personally. All of the steps I just talked about have to do with lessening the blow of embarrassment and taking away some of its power. I think this is a topic to explore in further detail in a future episode. Overwhelmed with stuff? Can't find what you need when you need it? Tired of wasting time, money, and energy maintaining your mess and longing for peace of mind? Let Julie Caraccio support you in decluttering your life to create lasting change. Visit reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn more. My final takeaway is to remember not to judge a book by its cover. Now, I know this is a pretty basic lesson, but I believe it's something that we can easily forget. Here's what I learned. I'm not, if I'm honest, I'm not a huge fan of Eminem because I see a lot of his work as misogynistic, violent, anti-gay. Now, I get that that's kind of the gangster rap and I'm old school and like the nice rap. However, I did some research after the movie because I wanted to know, is there more to meet the eye? I'm just painting this man with his rap and his music and this broad brush. So let's be open-minded. What fascinated me is he is a really wonderful father. I learned, and hopefully I'm getting this right, that so he had a child and he has raised the daughter and the child. I can't remember if the mother is still alive and I believe had some issues. And so he mainly raised his daughter. In addition to his daughter, and again, hopefully I'm getting this all right, he raised another child that his wife had, and then when his sister died, 
he raised the sister's child or children. And then his mother, I believe he had a half brother or half sister and raised him or her. And maybe it was the two sisters from the children and his ex-wife only, they only had the one daughter together. Anyway, he's raising four children, one of who is biologically his and the other three are not his children biologically. And I know some men out there who would not raise a child that wasn't their own. And from the research I found, he's a really fantastic father. And so that gives me a whole different perspective on him. Do I like his music? No, still not a fan of it. I prefer, again, things like folk music. People aren't going to ever be coming to me to looking for what the latest and greatest is. However, it appears that he has done really right by his children. If we choose to see the good in people, we will find it. I'm not saying you have to be someone's best friend, but can you find something that is positive about someone, especially someone that you're not a fan of? As I like to say often, everything is energy. Wouldn't it be better to be neutral about someone or remember the good than focusing on what you dislike or maybe even hate? When Eminem comes up now, instead of thinking of some violent rapper, I focus on what a good father he is. Who have you judged lately? Can you switch it and find something good about the person? Take actions from today's podcast. Look around you. How supportive is your inner circle? Do you need to make any changes? How can you get a handle on your embarrassment in the moment? Which one of the steps I talked about do you think would help you the most? Start practicing it. Think about someone you don't like or care for. What's good about them? What positive qualities do they possess? Can you practice focusing on that? On our next episode, we are going to talk about paying it forward while on vacation. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world. Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.